Hello with my mic on, everybody. There we go. And bringing everybody in, uh, welcome back mm -hmm. to uh, Indy's AR Explainer. This is episode two, and it's actually uh, part two of a very uh, special episode um, called The Reality of AR and Fashion. Last week, we, we started in on the subject, but realized um, that we wanted to keep talking about it. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, we've got two guests. Um, I, myself, am uh, Brett Kobe. Um, and we've got Alex Polson, the uh, Chief Executive Officer, and Shava Fragoso, the Chief Development Officer. Um, welcome, to the title this time. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I studied it. Good work. D, D's and T's. In some languages, they are basically the same. So, uh, so there we go. But thanks, guys, for, for joining. Um, today, I uh, wanted to get into the, the AR and fashion discussion uh, in a bit more granularity. And I thought we could have a little bit of a frame, which I'm going to throw up um, right in, uh, on Alex's face. Sorry, Alex. Uh, right. I can't move it. That's I'm not positioning. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and um, so we want to talk about how, uh, from a customer experience, how they are experiencing technology um, and retail when they are passing a storefront when they're walking in front of an actual building, when they're entering the store, where's the tech, uh, and then also at home. So from a fashion point of view, where these, these are the kind of touch points that uh, are traditionally uh, the ones that you would expect from a, a fashion buyer, a retail fashion consumer. And we're just gonna kind of jump through a few different examples today and just have a chat about where things are at, what's good, um, what still needs some some work, uh, and also just looking at the solutions that people have found to all these different uh, problems. So some of them are really good solutions, and some of them are just like, you know, okay, different. So different, yeah. <laughs> um, you know the alternative. This, it, yes, alternative solutions, um, alternative facts to <laughs> alternative problems. So but it's not going down no. that road. It's not good. You know it's not going to be a thirty-minute podcast. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> Everything is fine. Where's the, wait, let me get the flame thing. No, uh, <laughs> so just, just to talk about from a storefront point of view, uh, one of the things that you can do if you're a retailer is you're probably sitting on some real estate right now. You've got your traditional storefront. People are used to looking in your window, they're window shopping. Um, I wanted to just drop in a few different examples of, of that being done. So just going to, throw up some, some video on screen here. Uh, mm. This is an example of, I can't even say the, the name of no, this, yeah, Audemars Puget. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, no one on this call is going to say that right. Um, so this is the case of- Yeah, so this, is, <clears throat> so this yeah. is kind of my- Good. No, I was just to say, so this is kind of mobile based. Yep. Um, and then triggering, is that web based? Is it web AR or is it mobile app? It's probably web AR, the looks of it because they're triggering off the QR code, I think. Mm. So you scan your QR code and then you, yeah, so it's, it looks like it's web-based. Right, so it, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a pretty kind of straightforward thing that is supposed to happen. You walk by <clears throat> and you have a, a little scene that plays. So, yeah. like, you know, from my perspective, not being an expert in any of the technology, it seems like a, like a fun thing, neat. It's kind of in the neat category. Um, yeah. But in terms of actually doing any hard retail work, it doesn't really do that much, right? Or am I, am I missing something? Well, I think there's two things that go on with these. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so at the moment, AR, AR still kind of sat within the, the sort of marketing side rather than the, the sort of consumer product side. And so what you've got, what you've got there is, is effectively a marketing play, but it does, it does require... It's an interesting kind of situation because someone's actually considered the idea of turning the shop front into something dynamic, which so to start off with, kind of yeah. congrats because because that's not that easy to even achieve. But I think that I think you get into this thing that Dick Shovel will mention kind of probably more than once and has kind of mentioned to me several hundred thousand times in the past <laughs> three, four years. But the, but the amount of friction that you kind of get when when you try and attempt that. So there, there's a you've got something running in the window, but then you you also then need to communicate how people use it. So there's not really any kind of there's not a use case. I mean, people aren't walking past expecting windows to have dynamic video content or 3D content. 
So one of the first things you kind of struggle with and the, the thing you kind of have to overcome is, is, okay, how do people know that this is there and then how do they activate it? And that's a, that's so, a real, yeah, sorry, go, Chuck. No, that's the thing. Like uh, the, if you analyze step by step the, the, the consumer flow just to arrive to receive the message, it's it's like it takes a long a long time. And as, as you rightly mentioned regarding like where AR is sit in this in this specific scenario, I think that the, the, the simplest way to approach it is either help me or entertain me. So that is the the, the two things that you know, like you we can uh, we can see that augmented reality has a, a potential in these things. But if either the entertainment or the or the or the help takes too long to arrive is like sometimes probably a, a missing opportunity. So let's just have a look at um, another example. This is uh, Dior and a little easier to say. A lot of <laughs> French examples today. Um, uh, so it's and, web, yeah, it's yeah. web based again by the looks of it. So, you, so you're basically opening the, the web, the browser and then and then now you've got again you've got you kind of you've got some friction issues because now it's like you need to allow a b and c for it to to actually trigger um and then obviously it's rendering it looks like potentially 3d um but it could be sort of flat plane video um uh, it's flat flat uh, surfaces and like the environment yeah. So, yeah because it's using the tracking as well you know like to keep the to keep the graphics in in position and it i mean it looks nice and it's like what i really like is that it adds a digital layer to the physical space which in principle i think that there's uh a, a lot of opportunity there so how you execute it is the is the thing that is is, is debatable you know because if you access through this with a, with a qr code web base that's right like that le less friction or yeah. through an app that you already own, or through Snapchat, or through uh, Instagram, like something that that you are already in this channel of communication with the with the brand in order to, again, to arrive to the message. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's. I think it, you know we're in that kind of stage right now where people are beginning to kind of experiment with the idea of the of of what AR can give to a shop front. I think the I think there aren't many things that are, I mean other other than you know ar really you're into that kind of touchscreen environment and i think i think that's kind of a trickier place so ar kind of the, the the big kind of affordance of it is that technically you can render dynamic digital content into the the shop front i think without criticizing other people's work i would say that one of the one of the key elements to doing that well and that's really hard on mobile because you've got lots of limitations but is to render digital into the physical space and i think that's where the kind of that's where we kind of tried to play around a lot and that's that's what it is a lot of fun so the idea of being able to add digital information onto what's already in the shop, and that goes back to kind of Chavez's point, really. Like, are, you know, are you helping or are you, are you entertaining? If if you're giving me kind of live information about what's going on in the store, if you're giving me, if you're adding, uh, you know, live price offering to physical to physical shop fronts, then that's you know, for want of a better word, that starts to get quite sexy actually, because people really sort of start to think, hold on a minute. Can I? This, this is now adding a layer that was was previously impossible, um, and that's, I think that's what we touched on last time, which was, you know, why? How can a digital storefront? How can a you know an online storefront be so reactive and so dynamic, and yet a physical storefront can be so kind of ugh, so sort of flat? So um, speaking of like sexy and interaction and and all the stuff that you said. I'm wondering, and, and also friction, all these words that feel inappropriate in the wrong context. <laughs> um, but uh, just, I'm gonna throw this other example because I thought this was really interesting um, and something very Scandinavian, I think. Wow, QR codes <laughs> everywhere. Right, well. It's I'm, like QR well, code, yeah. 2020, the year of the QR code again, isn't it? I'm, I, I, can't, yes. I can't say for sure that this is from 2020 in my region. Okay. But, um, I am personally a few a big fan of the QR code, not because I mean I, it's just because everyone knows it, everyone. So in terms, well, they, should, of, they should do. It's been around for about the past two hundred and fifty years. Well, that's what that's <laughs> <we're funny. laughs> working at an AR company. But look, talk talk to your, <laughs> your, your parents no, and grandparents, right? I'm and, joking. But before we get into the the great QR code debate, let's just yes, like tell me, is this the kind of thing? 
besides the QR code, which clearly you're not in love with, is no, like, no, 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 you do a job. Um, I, I mean, I have no stock in the QR code, right? So don't worry. Uh, like, imagine I, if you imagine if you did that. 2020 would be a, a bumper <laughs> year. That would be uh, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, is this the kind of tell me like where does this actually place in terms of digital, physical? regular mobile uh, what is this? is this is this person effectively controlling that content i think are they they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're able to yeah see yeah. that's see to me that's that's probably as interesting if not more interesting than some of the some of the ar examples actually because mm. because to me that's a custom oriented solution to a problem and that that goes back to to chava's line which is okay we'll help me then and actually, if if they can unlock information and trigger information on another device or another screen or in another way, then that should be adding, that should be, A, to a certain extent, removing a bit of friction and B, adding a digital layer onto your physical shopping experience. I don't think necessarily it's always AR. Like, I don't think necessarily AR is always the solution no. in, those, mm -hmm. in those areas. In this specific, uh, in this specific <laughs> example, like what I do like is that I, as a customer, receive information of what's happening inside without actually entering right Without so I, al in. I already invest my time in order to like to yeah. figure it out right the yeah. thing that i'm not fun and i never be fun is about like this shaking gesture thing that can be solved with a button and you have buttons there but you know like, yeah. we need to grant access to your gyroscope and <laughs> you know like it could be easy. like i i like the i like the the, the approach of information the other thing is you know, like I, I I receive a larger size information that's you know, like <laughs> it's still it's still 2D, right? But uh, but yeah, like in, in terms of delivering the, the brand message, I think that it, it's it's doing a, a right job. I think I think giving people like empowering people on the ground to do stuff is actually a really, really underrated tool. Like are you, if you think about me, most of your retail experiences, you don't it's kind of like going to kind of going to um like museums that have kind of interactive displays and, and things like that you like there's a button there and you want to press it and if, if oh, you yeah. like, like that's just generally the case in life but it, like in those kind of situations it's amazing how it's amazing how little there is for you to to change in the space you don't really ever get the opportunity to adapt content and and probably an extra layer to that digital content of any kind is never really adapted to you so the sorry and don't, don't you guys think no, no like don't you guys think like uh, like there's already these gaps in the customer journey that we are feeling in a very primitive way as consumers what i'm yep. saying is i'm going to a shop right i'm comparing you know, like uh, products prices i'm checking it I go straight to Google to check if I can find it cheaper. I can go, you know, like, uh, to, like, I, I'm enabling the digital connection with the physical product by myself. Because as customers, yeah. most of the times, I don't have that. So I'll search, yeah. I'll compare, I'll dig more, like, I'll check reviews about the, about the physical product. And that gap, it's existing. Because I'm the third customer. I'm your online customer. I'm your physical customer. I'm the same person. Yeah. But I don't have that gap fulfilled. And I think that that's the, that's the interesting which part is, about this thing. Which is super interesting because that's one of the big problems, like particularly in US retail, is, is people browsing physical spaces and then just Amazoning it on site. So you're good. Amazon's just kind of basically sitting there waiting for you to go and touch a particular product and then kind of go, Great. Well, now I've got seven dollars off this, and I've just ordered it, and it's going to be there in the next six hours anyway. So yeah, that's, I think that's a completely valid point. I don't, I don't feel like there's any connection to. <clears throat> there's often, I mean, let's, let's be honest. Like when you walk into a store, you're presented with the brand, usually in posters or video, and if the brand has a large, fairly it appeals to a fairly large demographic, then again a lot of that media is not adaptable so it's not it's not moving in time depending on who's walking into the store <clears throat> and i think i think the kind of younger generation of of um of shoppers are are willing to move around spaces quite freely uh, they don't there's not necessarily this kind of you know this idea of sort of shopping male female anymore it's like okay i can i wander into that section and have a look at it and i feel like <clears throat> you know now you're getting in as as these posters in in storefronts and are uh, becoming displays 
it, it, it hasn't really evolved that much. It's still doing exactly the same thing. It's just basically saying, okay, so we showed this picture of this person here related to this particular product line for a certain amount of time, and then we switch it. And actually the change is seasonal when the, when the truth is the change should be like based on the person that's in the room. If you, if you can present that product to a different person in real time, or if you can add a layer of meta information through mobile, for example. So if you, let's say you can, <clears throat> let's say there's a, there's a mannequin with a particular, uh, like a particular shirt on in, in the window. If I could actually recognize that in real time and trigger other complementary information, complementary brand information, if it was tailored to me being able to, you know, knowing that I am whatever, you know, so I'm 42. So it's like, okay, we're going to show the slightly older version of the complementary things rather than the younger version. Um, that, you know, that that's all kind of technically possible now. Yeah. But it's very it, rare that it, <laughs> sorry, go on. Because, the thing, no, just to, 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 <laughs> just to <laughs> interrupt you now. And, and the funny thing is that that's already happening and we are already used to that on our online shopping, right? I'm, yeah. I'm target, retarget, turbo target every single time, right? Most of the times might be not useful. Some of the times it's it's very useful, but a thing like that journey on a physical space, it's already possible. Like I can already yeah. be, be targeted by, you know, by connecting with my, with my uh, loyalty program in my mobile phone, by, you know, like, by computer vision technology, you know, like that's the thing, by like trying to, um, send that specific message in the right moment on a physical commercial location is possible. Yeah. So, so why do you feel if it's all possible and we're, I guess, conditioned now to see a Facebook ad when we've just, when, when, when we know it's planted a pixel, so we know we're going to see it again because we <laughs> scan a QR code and we're in the system. Um, we scan that QR code because, and we had Facebook open on our phone. So boom, here it comes. Um, so if we're used to that with our devices, why? What's the barrier to adoption to this happening in the physical realm if it's all technically possible? I, I don't know. I, I think that I think there's a lack of awareness about what is possible, and I think I, I think one of the things that I mean we've been we've been building you know AR apps of any kind of description, whether it was a mobile, we've been building them since 2010. And, and back in 2000 and, and, uh, 2011, we put together, we put an iPad in a, in a, because the only way we could get an AR version working was to have it running on an iPad, looking out from the shop window. It was the world's worst mock-up. It was hilariously bad. <laughs> but the principle was absolutely sound. But you realize that when if we were just kind of realizing what it could do, you realize, you know, for the, the three years you were effectively evangelizing and talking to people about what this could achieve. And you're still doing it now to a certain extent. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of misinformation or a, a lot of, sort of disinformation to a certain extent in terms of, in terms of what is possible, you know, rather than rubbishing the things that, that you know, currently are a little bit sort of snake oily, they, there's, there's a, there's a lack of um, connection in between the, the retailers or the brands that are looking to do this stuff mm -hmm. and the people that can physically do it. Yeah. And I and I think, you know, agencies often bridge that gap. Mm. I mean, you know, ad agencies do bridge that gap sometimes, but, but, but the, sometimes they add to the confusion. Job. I, I, I can say like, like two things, like, uh, uh, like extending in, in what Alex said, like, like first is the, um, the, the, the fact that it's like, how can you um, make it for, you know, like 100 locations, 200 locations. So like the scale, uh, scalability is one of the of the things, not just the, the awareness. And that's why sometimes we see these great marketing videos about the potential of AR, the potential of uh, of dynamic display, the potential of. But most of the times it gets just either in the innovation stage or the marketing game. But uh, like and we have we have uh, been challenged by these things with our own products or with our own services when we need to think that it's not a one off like for instance like you can have a an amazing experience and have a like a takeaway picture of your like of your moment in the in the store who is the one like 
repairing the, the the printer or you know like changing the the, the cartridge mm -hmm. so all these kind of things like the physicality of the of the of the of the installations on site like sometimes it's is is is, uh, is is something that either the innovation part of the marketing part don't want to show but it's a, it's something real so if i'm on the operational side i yeah i won't care that much about your bling bling stuff I will I will be uh, very curious about how can we seamlessly operate in our, our locations this kind of technology. Mm. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was muted because this is a working office where other people are downstairs, and I think they're making like cereal, M and M's, every possible noise. Um, Arielo, so five again. Yeah, I just um, yeah. I mean, everyone is is leaving. And we're having a party right here online. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, the um, I just wanted to show this this one example here as um, this is some work that you did uh, at Tilly's, I think, in LA, California, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and just can you on the basis of this, this is um, can you for for like the layperson who's trying to understand your mm. the vision that you just described for that physical. Um, one LinkedIn commenter said the Google ads of AR <laughs> experience are just essentially um, like if we would, if you would make this again today, right. With, with all the, with, all, with the vision that you're describing, what would we be seeing now? Or what would our experience be if we walked into the store? It doesn't mean that there's a dragon or anything, but essentially we are looking into Tilly's and it has totally tricked out with everything you think it should have. <clears throat> what am I experiencing as what? a customer? So I don't think so. The first point with the Tilly stuff is that is that the digital is not going to replace the physical view, and I think that's the, that's the kind of this common misconception that we are. I think we even mentioned it last week. It was the it was the, like oh, it's going to change this. It's like no, no, no. What it's going to do is going to add a dynamic layer to it. So if if you get your your go again on stuff like that, which I'm sure we will do, you you want <clears throat> you want the view to be real. You want the entire view to be real. You want to do it so that no one has to download anything. You don't, you don't I, like, I, like I, I'm a big fan of, of mobile AR in a lot of different settings. But in that particular storefront setting, if we've got lots and lots of people walking past, mm -hmm. we don't want to get them to do anything. We don't want any friction. And we often kind of get criticized for this because it's like, oh, well, you could have done that with mobile. It's like, yeah, but we're trying to, we're trying to attract someone and keep someone there. And right. if I'm having to build a separate campaign to then do that, it's going to be problematic. So if you know if the actual the actual window is a complete view into the store, then why are we not able to place programmatic advertising based on who's in front of it, which we can do? Why can we not have different? So as you can see on the video, you can act, technically with a with a slightly different setup, you could see the entire length of the store. things that are actually at the back of the store and to me it was like okay we've got different people coming through at different times of day tillys is a great example so tillys is one of those stores that it's mind-bending how many different products for how many different age groups they have and so you think hold on a minute, if we know if we know that that's running and we know that people we know that at between 11 so so let's say brett you'll get this because you're from the us but mall walkers like i didn't know that mall walkers exist so <laughs> basically re retired people 60 70 when the weather's bad they get up and they go and walk in malls because they can't walk outside um just just to say that that is the only hobby um anyone in the suburbs has at all i know because yeah. I'm, at all ages so i think so, mall yeah, walker so, Mall I was walk. in a mall. I was in a mall in New Jersey installing something years ago, and suddenly right. there was this army of this apocalypse type scene of all these old people appearing mm -hmm. walking through the mall, but not looking at any stores because they're all shut. Anyway, long story short, so you've got different age groups walking through and appearing at different times, so you start to get into the idea of okay, if we've been advertising that product from from what you know from nine o'clock from eight o'clock in the morning until eleven, we now know that when school kicks out at like three four. We now know we've got a completely different set of, of people walking through that that room. And so now we need to adapt that in real time and know and then start advertising different products at different price ranges all the way through. Like right. that that's what that should do. Um yeah. and yeah, and, and maybe a dinosaur. And maybe or, or a dragon and it kind of ends up 
Yeah. So I want to just um, shift gears for a second to a few of our other um, things that cover up Alex's face. Um, and just to jump over to what's happening uh, in store and in home and, and maybe just to start actually with a, a hybrid of the two. Here's an example of, mm -hmm. you guys know this. Can you talk us through this one? Yeah, shall we go for it? Yes. Oh, yep. Uh, so it seems to be a mirror that scanned your face and um, and yeah, it prompts you to um, you know, like a virtual mirror so you can overlay some of the clothes offering on your body and have a picture to you know, like compare, take away, or share on social media. That's uh, yeah, that's a really straightforward you know like uh, application of this thing. But there's that QR <clears throat> code. Do we have, so where like can you can we rate this on? Look, the I'm really pro QR code. Okay, so I'd appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, can can we, we rate this on the on the friction scale though? So what is this kind of thing? Oh, it, yeah. I, in my mind, it feels hybridish, like storefront versus something that you could do in home if you had a really cool mirror. Um, but yeah, like, right, I mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I. It, I think there's a yeah, there, there, it is a hybrid that, because mm. because it's not necessarily your body by the looks of it. So it's basically yeah. personalizing. It's basically sticking your head on a on a templated okay. body so that the the yeah. clothing can sit on top of it. I, I don't know if that really. I think again, I think the principle of it is completely sound. I think as is often the case in these things, I think the execution sometimes gets confused because of the again the restrictions. But I think. I think the idea of using, the idea of being, of having the ability to try on clothes outside of a store, outside, or even in, you know, in a public space, is is pretty radical. I, I think it's like that's one of the most exciting elements of, of kind of using this tech. Um, I think that the, the probably the. The issue they ran into is that they couldn't personalize. I'm assuming they couldn't personalize the the frame to the clothing so i.e different different size people arriving simple as that so on the on the other side i just want to so you know when i prepare for these episodes i go in as a normal person which i am luckily um to find out what normal people are doing in the comfort of their own homes when it comes to buying clothes right and one thing that i couldn't help but find so many of these is this thing called the zozo suit uh, <laughs> which is, uh, so there, if you check out, go to YouTube, you'll see 50 videos of people trying on this suit, which is really, it's really interesting. And some people love it, some people hate it. Some people may have been paid. Some people d hate it so much that they couldn't possibly have been paid, but I don't know. But anyway, it's there. <laughs> so this is, it seems to be like a motion capture, motion capture suit yep. um, that you put on at home and then you use your phone to capture yourself. And yep. that, what you never see in these YouTube videos is what happens after this stage. They just say, I loved it. I hated it. Bye. Yeah, that's, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Because yeah, if you loved it, you'd want to show it, no? Exactly. Right. Well, you, you want to see, okay, <clears throat> I ordered the clothes based on this, and now I, you know, it, it fits me perfectly. So if if I tell you, like, for a lot of people, they will think maybe that this is the state of home try-on and technology. Um, I, what is your reaction to that? Like, is it true? Did, I mean, what's it's, going on? Is this a thing? It, I, I mean, I'm going to use the word friction again because okay, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. because that looks particularly frictionful. Um, but, what, but Alex, what if it were covered in QR codes? If it was covered, in, well, technically, it kind of, yeah. technically, it was. Te technically, it kind of is. I mean, it's you know, I mean, it's it's an age old tech, relatively age old tech, kind of mm. motion capture kind of 3D studios, et cetera, have been using it for years and Hollywood movies have been using it for years and it's kind of evolving at a rapid pace. Um, and, and, and it gives you the opportunity to measure movement in a very, very clear way. So studio, you know, animation studios will use it to basically record motion data so that they can then add the 3D character to the motion data so the motion will be lifelike. So it, the, the, the science is, is completely sound. I just don't know. <clears throat> I, I think the discussion around kind of try on is is really about, and Chavo and I have actually kind of argued about. We're not argue about this. We don't argue. We just bicker. But the with the um, the of w what the fitting of how important the fitting is in the in the general scheme of things. 
So, so is that is that point number one that that you are you have a, a very very clear understanding of your measurement, or is are there other kind of factors that are more important, which Chavo would probably argue? Yeah, definitely. Well, <clears throat> So we are looking here. Right, you're muted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, just to say that uh, we've now completely blocked Alex. So Chaba definitely has that. Wait, it's back. Now, definitely have the floor to tell us. So, you know, when you developed this test, you your hypothesis was this is the starting point, right? You need to be able to do this before you even think about any motion capture technology. <laughs> and yeah, any well, filters, right? Uh, it's two, it's two like two directions to to try to solve the same problem. In the previous example that you said, like more than a motion capture suit, basically like those dots is to track movement, right? So mm -hmm. if with the sensors of your of your phone, you can actually have you know like more accurate measurements. That it will be translated into data. How this data will be delivered in a, in an avatar shape, just in you know like the range of of your size in X brand of clothing. So in our example, what like let's say that we are uh you're know, like arriving from a, from a different source like for for us it's really important like to on tap that specific moment of looking yourself in the mirror and having this uh this digital clothes on on top of you like that's a different that's a different approach with this we can we can have an estimate about like about the sizing but we don't need to go that specific to you know like put a tracking suit in order to uh, to do these things, or how other companies are doing that, creating a you know like a full scan of yourself and providing you your your three D avatar the next day that wakes like you know like three hundred megabytes that you need to download and have a mini version of, of you. So it's it, it is a different approach, and that's why uh, for us coming from the AR experiential part, I think that like there's a lot of room for us to you know, like to create a ni nice experience to connect this. Um, well, the, the emotional connection between you know, like seeing yourself in the mirror with uh, those uh, those digital clothes, you know, and again, like trying to be frictionless. So one other, um, we we actually we talked on the last episode about the the limitations of what you can do with something like that, um, uh, and you know, and and. An audience, please refer back to the other one where we were, where we were very negative about where things stand. Um, but today is a new day, and uh, it's actually raining. Um, but we're very excited about the possibilities today. Um, so, uh, you know, just knowing that the that currently, you know, the in-home story, whether you know wh whether that example happens in a store or at home, um, you know, the, the situation is is a little bit comparable at the moment. But if you think about how uh, from, with the in-home situation, how could a consumer actually um, be excited about a fashion line uh, that I, you know, beyond just the try-on thing? So I wanted to show one example that I thought might fit there. This is a recent product launch um, in AR for the uh, the new OnePlus uh, smartphone, and what you see here is just you know this is clearly in a home because there's a couch there. <laughs> That's how I know, <laughs> and. Um, and you just see like a whole show unfolding with an actual person there. And I wondered, is you know, can we can we be thinking about you know, does H and M put on their new fashion show in this way so that you can experience that in home in this way? Or like, mm. is this is there something here that fits with the in home fashion story? I don't know. It's a question. I think that there's I think there's a lot that can be done with it. I think the idea of the kind of I mean, the fashion brands have kind of have had to kind of quickly sort of bump up their knowledge in this kind of stuff because they've had to launch a lot of products online only. Um, and so I think the virtual catwalk thing makes complete sense for, for something like this, for technology like this. Um, I, I think the I think the idea of kind of product visualization to a certain extent is, is useful. I think the idea of kind of live event broadcasting using AR is kind of super interesting. Yeah. Um, it's in its infancy, but it's something that's, that's getting there faster and faster. Um, I, I think I think being part of something that's being beamed in, but having it three dimensional is is like is pretty cool. Um, mm. If you if it's I noticed with Unity like Unity's IPO last week, <clears throat> they they had um, they had the line in there that the, the, basically the world is transitioning from broadcast to two D to three D, which is something that we kind of lived with for a long time. 
And I think that's it, you can sort of take that principle to that completely and say, well, if I if I can have that event happening in a in a more in sort of immersive format, then I'm going to probably do it. It's just a question of how much content you can kind of basically pump through for that particular event. Um, I don't know if it was recorded or not. I don't. I didn't. Kind of I don't know. I didn't, I didn't that deep yet, but. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like it would be a lot of fun if it went off without a hitch. Of course, I, I watch it without sound or actually having experienced it. The, the, the video recap is always better than the actual thing, I find, because <laughs> yeah. um, uh, you can just kind of tweak that a little bit. Um, but it looked like a, um, a great execution from the video. Um, just to, to jump back to um, you know, the clothing story here. So these are, as I understand it, some tests with the indie viewfinder product mm. um so uh, sorry that I, I got these from youtube and the ad popped up <laughs> and <laughs> i saw that that's what happened so is that your ad so ar <laughs> google ads there you go. I, don't know if we, I don't know if we're getting paid for that keep playing it <laughs> so, uh, so tell me, like how does that all actually what are, what are we looking at and how does it all fit together uh and what is this sorry oh she's Perfect, coming Trevor. there we go yeah well, this is uh, you know like another of the approaches that we that we have in terms of product visualization, uh, especially on the on the on a mobile platform. The idea is that you know like the to have um, in, in the e-commerce side, we either have you know like uh, photos or or videos. So we were toying with the idea of like three D product visualization, but again, like instead of using a, a, an overlay and you know like in a in a in a way that th for the users will be difficult to capture themselves with the clothes. We were using this this avatar to to showcase the the cloth just to prove the the point that you know like this kind of visualization can be uh, can be also a part of the customer journey that it's already well established within e-commerce sites. So that is the that is the the approach that we took in this one. There's a good connection between the two. Like, there's a good connection between the, the conventional shopping experience and then the visualization side. <clears throat> I think that was the, well, kind of one of the re reasons why we included the kind of dummy UI in there so that you can see, you can specifically see how you would choose it and configure it. Because often, again, there's a lot of this kind of, oh my God, what have I got to do now? How's this going to work? But actually, the transition on that one's quite relatively simple. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was a fun one, that one. Cool. And the, I just wanted to kind of bring us back to um, maybe I would consider the low hanging fruit of home try on. Um, and this one, there's something that has done the rounds quite a bit. This is a Gucci uh, example. Um, yeah. Can you just tell me a little bit like, are shoes easy? <laughs> shoes <laughs> like, are easier. Yeah. <laughs> like shoes yeah. are easier, period. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, like just the, the setup. So the setup of you holding your like that's what you do when you try on shoes. You basically yeah. you you put them on and then you stand up and then and you lift your feet up like that, and then you kind of try and find a mirror. So the idea like that to me that to me is the is the clearest the clearest example of how how mobile AR translates to selling more retail products if it's if it's shoes, it works. So do you think that would work for gloves? It would technically work for gloves. I don't know how many people try on gloves though. Like I don't everyone it's like a big it was a big mark. I don't yeah. They just don't yeah, know they need them yet. But once yeah, everybody I mean, once well, Apple tells them that they need them. Well you're technically like, doing yeah. this, aren't you? So you're technically kind of yeah. doing you're like putting your hand up here and doing that. Yes. And then or, having to kind rings. of use, Rings, huh? Rings, yeah, you could do yeah. it with rings, yeah. Mm -hmm. You could do it with watches. I've seen lots of, I've seen some, there has been some good examples of um, mm. of people apparently buying sort of, you know, $8,000 watches on um, through a mobile app, which I find slightly difficult to believe, but that's that's something that does work, the the positioning. I mean, the old the old <laughs> thing was the kind of QR, the actual QR marker, which you wore as yeah. a wristband, and then you kind of pointed the phone at it. Right. But do you know what, like the like two advantages of like for instance the 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 watch example or the um, or the the shoes example, is that like that kind of product visualization you can you can achieve something really realistic in a in an easier way that for instance moving clothes. So that's why uh, you know like there's this 
this uh, this specific difference in in nature about you know like how can how good it looks like how realistic it looks so mm -hmm. i think that we can say that it's uh, it, it is a little bit easier on the on this kind of products same for instance uh you know like purses bags something that that is not actually you know like something that is moving yeah. or that has these physical qualities it always makes it more realistic you know I think hats, like hats and glasses. I think there's been a lot of good work done with yeah. the kind of face stuff. So, the, so mobile face tracking has kind of evolved <clears throat> tremendously, um, and mobile wise, it's kind of at that point where it's kind of working well enough now, and you can do a lot of interesting stuff. Again, the hat can kind of be on your head. It doesn't necessarily need. It's not going to necessarily move as you move. Right. um the glasses are kind of the same thing if you can get a realistically realistic render of the glasses i feel like i'm surrounded by two people wearing glasses at the moment but if you right. can make it look like that or like that then you can you can basically that's <laughs> enough like as long as it tracks and as long as there's a realistic feeling of the glass i think i think that's enough uh, i don't know like people can kind of comment as to whether they've actually used it to buy um, yeah. Fashion is uh, as yeah, well as jewelry. <laughs> Wanda, Wanda, have you used it to buy anything? Can we ask you? Yeah. Um, if you've bought anything, so just come back and tell us if you uh -huh. have. If you have. Uh, I mean, Modiface. Modiface did. You know, Modiface went to was it Estee Lauder? I think it was Estee Lauder. I think they got bought by Estee Lauder. Um, and so Modiface with the with the makeup, like they did, they did tremendous work. Because they just circled in on like, okay, how can we do how can we do that, and how can we only do it with this with makeup, for example? Yeah, so, and with these two two over. Uh, sorry, just to just to to, to finish on, on that thing. Like, there's there's two two important things or two like final consumer goals. One is how do I look, and that's kind of easily it's an easier way to achieve it. And the other, like, do does it fit me? And that's a little bit more complicated because mm -hmm. once that you start like that's that's different like with uh, with hats with uh, jewelry as, as they were saying it's easier to like just to overlay because you don't have this this uh, full uh, need to know that is the specific size mm -hmm. that you mean so that is two different challenges that you know like mm -hmm. little by little it's getting it's getting there you know like to fulfill all the all the all the needs on that. I think with clothing, I think I think with the the kind of mirror and the try on stuff, uh, one hasn't used it, but would definitely use it for lipstick. Trying them on in real life is messy. That's that makes a lot of sense. That's not something I've ever yes. said. I bet yeah. three guys on a live LinkedIn live would not think of lipstick, would they? But I, I've had my color for years, so I yeah. kind of very very rarely strayed um, out of any brand. But that's a really, really <laughs> point. thank you for sharing. Yeah, that is, that. yeah, yeah. And that, but that's a, that's a brilliant that's a brilliant example mm -hmm. of what happens when when the customer meets the tech. Mm -hmm. So where, when the when the customer arrives and says, I, I, "That's not really my problem. My problem is this." Yeah, yeah. And 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 a lot of times, you know, us sometimes included, and 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 a lot of kind of tech side, they kind of. Solve sometimes that problem that is not really wanted, and I think like I, th I think with the clothing, I think I think you're definitely going to see with the clothing, you're going to see it hit a point, and it's going to be us that gets there, mm -hmm. and you're going to see it hit a point with the rendering, mm -hmm. and then you're going to and there's something, and you won't know what it is, you're just going to see it in the next six twelve months, you're going to see it, and you're going to go, that's enough, right, and it won't it won't be because of a particular you know you won't be able to say ah the number was three hundred and twelve or the you know the setting was B. It's just going to be like a load of different things get matched up, and you're kind of going to go, okay, that would be enough for me. Yeah. Um, so and I think. Sorry, go on. To, no, you go ahead. You no, I was, was going to say that menswear. I think <clears throat> I think menswear could potentially be first mm. um, because I think I think they're they're less they're less demanding in a lot of sense. I mean, menswear has evolved tremendously over the past kind of 10, 15 years, but I think that. I think that there'll be there'll be a basics. There'll be I think you'd have to begin with a basics with a with a kind of a casual kind of side of stuff. And I think if you can work through from there out, then you've got a, a pretty great roadmap of of um, of how to do it. Cool. Well, it sounds like we're um, you know there's some low hanging fruit. There's some things that are worth trying, and then good to hear on the positive note that we are six months away. Great from just cracking <laughs> in that.
Well, and, don't um, get me wrong. I mean, don't yeah. get me wrong. We're we're, we're on it now. Like, yeah. I mean, the video, you know, we're in like several, a series of several sprints to get the rendering up to speed and the tracking up to speed. So who knows? I mean, if Chava's brilliance is continuously on display as usual, then it might be <laughs> even, it might be even a matter of weeks. Like um, full disclosure, I received some shade for in the previous episodes of like five years. Everyone was there like, uh, <laughs> but in my what? head, it is the full, you know, like the full life cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shade, shade, shade. shade, shade. I, shade. I, I, I yeah, feel yeah. like, yeah, I feel like there's a couple of conversations with AR that kind of need to be addressed. One is, one is what can it do now and how well can it do it? And the other one is, yeah. is stop telling people that they're all going to be wandering around in Apple glasses in three months time. That's the only, that's the only time I get a bit sniffy. Um, mm -hmm. And Magic Leap, which to no. be fair, they deserve, they deserve the, uh, <laughs> they deserve but, but I think, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening as like all the videos have kind of come up. There's a lot of stuff happening and it's, it's iterating incredibly quickly. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. think, I think for you, you know, for you to look at, consider using it or the idea of using it, I think you have, you have to be in early because you have to understand how it works, just to understand what it does and doesn't do. Um, but it's moving quick, like super fast. Yeah. If just just look at all the all the things that are happening on the space of you know like body scanning with mobile devices and how it could be applied into you know like not only visualization but you know like uh, re reduce returning of clothes or like perfect feed and so on like there's a lot of interesting thing, thing happening there so but that's yeah. like that's the customer need isn't it that's again it's like yeah. okay the customer is getting something they can use at home in certain way and also the bra the brand is then able to reduce returns by i don't know 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent. like that's a that's a huge that's a huge change and that's a kind of viable way of kind of selling in that particular product um but i i, I think that we i just think that there's a there's there's off the, there's a need there's a need for you to go through those processes first you have you have to build these things to be able yeah. to understand what's broken and fix them um that's not really negative. No. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a relentlessly positive person. No, but, but yeah. it's a little bit of a humble, humble approach, isn't it? Because it's not that I will disrupt this process. It's how can, with this piece of technology, can enhance that specific part of the consumer flow. And I think yeah. to be humble and, and, and have this approach, it's it's always a, you know, a better pay. Well, it's, it evolves, doesn't it? I think I think the reality, having been in it, having been developing this this stuff now for for nine years plus, um, you know, I've you, it it actually has it has moved on in a really really steady way, six months, twelve months, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think I think the the more people in the industry who who treat this as okay, how can I use this to make this better, rather mm. than just using the just saying, oh, AI is going to change, AI is going to do. It's going to do A, B, and C, whatever. Like, let's look at the idea of like, how is that going to make? How is that going to allow you to try on clothes at home in real time and buy them instantly? Like, if that's the problem, that's the problem we're trying to solve. If you're going to solve that problem, then that's great. If you're going to reduce returns, that's great too. And so I think I it's just it's just kind of how you view it. That's all. Yeah. So solve a customer problem solve a business problem and then it will be a thing and then we'll just have it it will be there and uh if you, yeah yeah oh wait one la one final question arnau could ar bring the bricks and mortar retail to your living room so all brand could go 2d to oh okay D2. i was like what is that t2 i was like got arnold schwarzenegger in the house so um, is there, like, basically, does it, does it kill bricks and mortar? I don't think no? so. Never. Okay. Bricks and no, mortar. I, 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 don't, I don't think it's going to, I think it's going to change. I think, like, this year's sped it up, but I don't think it's going to change. I think it's, it's going to be there. People are still going to want it, I think, but they're going to have to start really upping the game in terms of the coordination between digital and, and physical, like, big time. Yeah. Well, if there's one thing we've learned from this <laughs> pandemic is that people are desperate. <laughs> to get back to physical spaces. So check out <laughs> AR Explainer. Uh, that what a segue. That will not be. What a uh, segue. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, um, and anyway, a terrible segue to our, our outro, but this has been a really cool conversation, guys. Um, I think we covered a lot of ground. We covered our uh, beautiful three pillars there, storefront, in-store, in-home. You know what I thought was lacking because I prepared it was the in-store. I would like to, to talk about that more next time. 
um, and figure out what exactly you could do there. Don't start telling me now because I want to save it for another episode, but I want to feel like I go into the store and a lot of stuff happens frictionlessly. And, and I, I feel like this was a better store visit than before. I have not seen that happen yet. I have not experienced that. When was that. the last store you walked in that you thought that you came out and liked the brand more than when you walked in? <sighs> stores, Brett and stores. Brand hmm. stores. <laughs> that is a, that's a cliffhanger. That's the cliffhanger for next time. I'm going to research it because right now I'm coming up with nothing. I really hate going to stores. Yeah. I'm not yeah. into it. So, um, but look at me. I wear the same clothes every day. Like, yeah, is that the same shirt from last week? To, okay, <laughs> time to go now. Time to go. So that was the uh, uh, that was episode two. So we'll be back uh, with more uh, AR Explainer. This has been uh, Chava Fragoso, C G CDO of, of Indy. Uh, Alex Paulson, CEO of Indy. And I have been uh, Brett Kobe, the AR Explainer. It's the name of the show and also the title that I hold. Um, so thanks for joining us. We're gonna go and let's uh, let's can we do like a like a touch handshake type thing? Is that weird? We do it uh, in a way. Yes, I can't. Okay. So I'm a little bit dirty. I'm sorry. I, 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 I about it. Like, I, yeah, I can't put my hands up all that like because of the. Yeah. I understand. You've been working yeah. on your motorcycle. It's a yeah. thing that you do. <laughs> So, uh, so next time, more on motorcycles and fashion um, <laughs> and augmented reality. Um, that's AR Explainer for today. Thanks, everybody. We're out. Bye-bye. See you later.